Okay, I am just going to go ahead and get started. I waited five minutes, so there might be more people joining and when and if they do, I will mute them or remind everybody to please mute yourselves so that we can hear all the information. Again, I am Suzanne Fagan and I am a theater instructor here at Moore Park College. I also see that we have other faculty on this call, which is exciting. I have asked Moira McDonald, she is faculty here as well, that if there are any questions that pop up in the chat, feel free to use the chat for questions. If there are any questions that pop up in the chat, she can attempt to answer them. And also anybody else that is faculty that has the answer perhaps on the tech side or what have you, they can answer your questions as well. So thank you so much for coming to this meeting. We, this is an informational meeting, orientation meeting for the new way of life we're living in this COVID world for our fall semester 2020. We do know some stuff and I'm excited to share that with you. And we don't know everything. And as is the case, it seems nationally and statewide, it seems to be a moving target. So um, I'm happy to share with you what we do know so far. And I'm also excited and happy to share with you that as theater people, I feel we are ridiculously creative. We have a lot of different irons in the fire as to how we are going to manage this situation and how we're going to still be able to reach our student learning outcomes all while keeping everyone safe. So I am just going to go ahead and share my screen because I have a couple slides that I just wanna have up for your convenience. So, Yes, hello and welcome, Theater Arts Department, Performing Arts, Moore Park College. I wanted to make you aware of a couple of emails and changes. We do have a new dean. Her name is Priscilla Mora, and the chair of the department is still John Leprino. These are our emails. Uh, I am Suzanne Fagan. Hale Rizdana is also on faculty. She is the costumer and also teaches full time. And so if you don't have these emails, take a picture of this, write them down. You can always shoot any three of us an email and we will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So COVID and coronavirus. I don't know if many of you are aware, but there is a great website when you first go to the moreparkcollege.edu website. And it's plastered right above in bright red, and it's the alerts. And so this is a really good place if you haven't visited it yet to see the updates from the president himself regarding what's going on with our school and with coronavirus and how we're handling the situation. Now, I just wanna be very clear, your instructors, clearly, we don't wanna get coronavirus. <laughs> I don't. Uh, and students first, we do not want you to get coronavirus. So we are definitely following the guidelines as stated by the CDC and also the Ventura Public, the Ventura County Public Health Office. Supposedly, we will be getting a directive from the VCPH as to whether or not people and to what extent are allowed on campus. We have petitioned to be able to be allowed on campus all while practicing CDC guidelines, social distancing, required PPEs. We will be getting word on that on July 27th, hopefully. So I know that there are a lot of meetings set up for after July 27th to really hammer out what exactly we will be able to do in some of these classes. So like I said, it is a moving target even on the national and state and city and county level. So what does that mean for us? And what are these exciting, awesome irons in the fire that we have? Uh, I wanted to mention uh, that 
when the uh, coronavirus and the shelter in place first hit, just sharing personally that I uh, didn't realize it was, I was going through a bit of a loss as far as uh, we were living this one life and now we have to live this life. There's, that was a loss of life and there was confusion and there was the unknown. And I still uh, had classes to teach and we did the one acts. And I can honestly say that being able to meet with these creative students with the one acts really helped feed my soul. And I know that it did the same for them. So we are very adamant and the biggest cheerleaders for how important the arts are and especially how important excuse me, how important the arts are during this kind, uh, this time of crisis, excuse me. So that being said, um, we are really advocates of this. The administration knows that we're advocates of this and they are our allies when it comes to this. So all classes will be 100% online. If a class has a lab component, that is when we will, and we have petitioned that 90% of it will be online and 10% of it will be on campus, all while practicing the CDC guidelines, social distancing and obtaining and wearing PPE. So acting one online, all online. Asynchronous and synchronous, depending on the teacher. Of course, because of jobs, essential workers, careers, families, if it is synchronous, I'm sure there will be allowances as far as missing a class due to childcare, missing a class due to your essential work. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. And Again, the important thing and the important date to keep in mind is July 27th. We should hear from the BCPH about exactly what we are allowed to do on campus. So what does that mean and what are we thinking about when it comes to all of our fun productions? In the fall, we were going to be doing Angels in America. We did scrap that for Macbeth. And here are three different ways that we are thinking of presenting and producing Macbeth. One of the synopsis or the general synopsis that we think we're going to be going with is setting Macbeth in the very near future where it's maybe nine months away and the virus has gotten worse. The shelter in place is still in place and actually mandatory, and maybe even hazmat suits are required. This, I think, will help with keeping us even safer, making it the play live in the actual world that we are living in and being able to use the PPEs as costumes and props. Uh, we would rehearse all of that online via Zoom, online, what have you. And then we would be allowed perhaps one week, perhaps more, to film the piece. We, the synopsis entails these group of students breaking in to the PAC and filming each other while they perform Macbeth. And as many of you may know, Macbeth is a cursed play and you are not allowed to perform or you're not allowed to say the word Macbeth in a theater unless you're in a production of it. These students are clearly not in a production. They're just kind of going rogue and they broke into the theater and they are producing this themselves just for fun. And so chaos and disaster ensues because they said the word Macbeth without being in a production of Macbeth. That is one of the ideas 
and one of the executions that we are thinking about for this particular production. We are already working on storyboarding this. Uh, I am directing the main stage and I already have an assistant director who has a background in film and he is assisting me with all of this. So we are definitely moving forward with this first plan in the hopes that 90% we will be able to rehearse online and then we have that 10% where we can go in and film. The second idea for this play is no, uh, is the pageant wagon performance, again happening in October. Pageant wagon performances were very popular during the medieval times due to the fact that the government and religion and even disease stopped people from attending theater. And so it would be very in line with many of the things that are going on today with the pandemic. And we would again rehearse online and then seeing as how we have many different spaces and many parking lots, we could perform in the parking lot in these sort of pageant wagon sort of setups. Exactly what that means, I'm not too sure. Are there trailers that move? That could be. Does the audience move? That could be as well. So that's another exciting option that we have. And the last one is, of course, rehearse online and perform over Zoom, send in self-tapes, perform over Facebook Live, perform over YouTube Live, kind of similar with what we did for the one acts and our awesome improvisational class that we have learned a great deal from in uh, since doing it in the spring and we have new ways to edit and put together these pieces so that is um, another option the first option though is what we're really working towards and hoping for so auditions will be for both main stage and the one acts August 18th and 19th and callbacks will be all via zoom and there will be a sign up genie or sign up genius at the Moore Park Theater Arts website shortly. We've already created it. I just want to make sure that I get the audition sheet uh, taken care of and put up there so that everything is in order and again all of this while practicing social distancing with PPE. So the student one acts, we would again rehearse online and our options for the, this piece is we have the quad on campus. It's near the bookstore if you're familiar with it. It's a concrete stage that you could easily walk by and not notice because it's a low stage. So we would like to rehearse these online and perform them on the quad during the day and filming those performances. Also, we still have the pageant wagon play set up. We are fortunate as a theater, unlike other theater companies who do not have an outdoor space and just have a theater building. We are fortunate to have these open spaces near us. So we have, again, petitioned, and we're hoping to hear back. And again, those auditions would be August 18th and 19th with callbacks on the 20th, and this is all via Zoom. And again, I can't emphasize enough, all while practicing social distancing with PPE, because I don't want to get corona, and I don't want you to get it either but I want us to have fun creatively. So another piece that we're looking at is theater for young audiences. And we have been going to other schools throughout our time working with this class and performing plays. What we would like to do is start a program called not necessarily keeping this, but Shakespeare in the Moore Park, where we do Shakespeare for the community and we do it outside. Traditionally, if you're familiar, Shakespeare, usually uh, Shakespeare Renaissance pieces are usually a summer show uh, 
entity, but we were thinking of starting it in the fall here and then perhaps moving it to the summer later on in the years to come. So the plays that we're looking for for that are Macbeth and A Midsummer Night's Dream. I am working on cutting those down to 30 minutes each with very light iambic pentameter. I was really wanting to make this extremely kid friendly. I've done Shakespeare in the Park with the Actors Gang Theater Company in Culver City, California. And we've always been able to have a great big kids audience and they've been able to understand uh, what we're saying and the story and the plot and the character and the relationships. And we wanna be able to bring that to more park. So that is definitely something that we're very excited about. The first option for that, of course, would be the quad, perhaps, um, yes, filming the performances, the quad during the day, perhaps with uh, minimal audience where there are chalk circles uh, spray painted on the ground. That was something that was brought to our attention that they were doing in a park in London. But again, we uh, want to keep ourselves safe and we want to keep you safe. So that is just one of the irons in the fire that we were talking about. The other idea is, um, well, there, those are the two ideas. Filming the performance um, of the live audience, perhaps with chalk circles. Um, and the other idea was that these scenes could be mounted on uh, and, and taken around the town. I was, it was brought to my attention that Moore Park, the city, had the Easter Bunny come around to the different cul-de-sacs and the different streets of Moore Park to wave at the kids and what have you. And I think a carrot was with him. So that is something that we could possibly do as well, where we dispatch a couple of actors, they go to the street with permission of the city and what have you, they perform a scene or two and they get back in and they go on and move on to the next street or city or what or street or cul-de-sac or what have you. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough, all while practicing social distancing with PPE. Another option that we were thinking for theater for young audiences is that we have a partnership with a senior citizen, assisted living or a retirement home and making a project with this particular senior citizen that each actor might be assigned. Getting to know them, getting to know a specific part of their life or their whole life in general, all via online, all via Zoom and crafting a piece about their life or about that one instance in their life and performing it or via Zoom, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or taping it and giving it as a gift of living theater to that person, that senior citizen center and that family. So I wanted uh, to just once more tell you about all the updates that are to come. And if you need to find any information these are the awesome websites and emails that you should keep in mind. Of course, if you're not friends with the Moore Park College PAC Facebook page, I encourage you to do that. We do set up a lot of announcements there. Also the website, which is Moore Park College EDU Theater Arts and the alerts website. And again, my email or John Leprino's email. I do believe John Leprino might be showing up to this meeting a little bit later. So if you have any questions for him, we can definitely ask him. And I do want to turn this over now to Moira, who is also going to be showing a little bit of something. Let me just unshare. And Moira, are you here? I am here. Yay. Hi. Do you <laughs> want to go ahead and chat it up a bit? I do. I do want to chat it up a bit. So um, 
Hi everyone, I teach lighting design at Moore Park College, uh, among other things, including puppetry. Um, and so for, uh, for lighting design, you know, lighting is normally a very hands-on class and I'm sure people are wondering how that might work if we are mostly or completely online. So I have some, a little presentation to share with you. And let me just find the share screen button. There it is, right in the middle. Um, and I'm gonna go to this, and then I'm gonna go to this. And there we go. So during this um, little presentation, I might not be able to also answer questions that you might have, but I will come back to them um, or someone else will answer them when we get the chance. So I can do it. Thank you, Moira. Thank you, Suzanne. So here's just a, a slide of uh, the lighting design class at Moore Park. This is a student, um, Kendall, who went here. And this was taken during a, an exercise at the beginning of the class where students design the lights for a poem. Um, and it's the first time you get your hands on the lights. Um, so we would be adapting assignments like that to, to um, more of conceptual design. Um, since we won't be physically in person. Um, so for things like hanging and focusing lights, which again is very hands-on, there will be instructor-led tutorials. I will be um, providing tutorials uh, live. And then for those of you who cannot attend a synchronous class, they will be recorded and you will have access to videos of those tutorials so that you can follow along in your own time when it works for you. Um, so um, also with uh, in the class, we learn uh, a little bit of programming, um, an ION light board. And um, with the ION, there is software available for Mac or PC that is free, that you can download to your computer or laptop. Um, or I believe the school has also uh, been distributing Chromebooks. Um, I think you could download it to that as well, although I'd have to double check. So you can follow along with any programming instruction, literally doing it yourself also on your own computer and watching how it affects things. Um, we can try to get a visualizer installed also so that you can see what it would look like if you brought up a light on the stage. Um, okay, so again, we'll be doing this online, but you'll get some, at least some hands-on experience. And if you can't, again, do it live with me, you can watch the tutorial after the fact and see how everything works um, with programming and bringing up lighting cues. So I wanted to jump to something we at Moore Park College became aware of. This would be in the event that everything had to go completely online and we don't get that 10%. The Ventura College did an opera called Labyrinth and they um, created a film of that opera. And it's highly creative and fun to watch. I recommend looking it up. Maybe I'll put a link to it in the chat. Um, the students filmed themselves or had a friend or family member film them and then it was all edited together with the music performance and they created this wonderful kind of almost like an experimental film out of this opera. And that is something that could be done. So the lighting design students for that instead of um, maybe coming in a few days or for a week or two to hang and focus uh, real lights in a physical space, you would, or outdoor space, you would be um, advising the student in, say, One Acts or Macbeth as to, um, and maybe they would get lighting kits, a, a couple of clip lights and some gel that you provide to them that you pick out and say, okay, I want you to be in dark blue and a pale straw yellow. Um, and I want you to put one light here and one light there when you film yourself so that you're still interacting with the actors and you're still creating, you're still designing the look as approved by Suzanne Fagan, the director. Um, but we would, we would talk about that and meet about that and, and um, figure out a way to make it work. Um, 
So just jumping away from Macbeth for a second, um, here are, so every year at Moore Park, there are student written, directed, and acted and designed one acts, which is super exciting. Um, there's not a lot of community colleges that, that provide a place where students can have their own voice in this way. So um, every year they do these one acts. Again, they, like Suzanne mentioned here, so this, and my class, uh, the lighting class designs the lights for it. So again, if we move outside, this is a fancier um, outdoor venue than the one in the quad. But I thought it was a nice picture of an outdoor performance. So we would be, if that happens, providing the lights for one or more of the one acts outside, and then the audience would be socially distanced, and we would be finding ways to hang and focus the lights. Um, or it would be like the page pageant wagon. I called it little stations, but the pageant wagon idea where they'd be little scenelets that would be maybe set up in the parking lot and maybe we would be just putting up some Christmas lights or maybe if it's in a parking lot, the car's headlights would be lighting the performance and maybe somebody would run in front of one of the cars with some red gel and make it all red and scary. So stuff like that could happen. Um, so there, there are ways, again. And then finally, I think this is my last slide. Suzanne and I had talked about um, the possibility of there being uh, shadow puppets in the production of Macbeth. And again, whether we do, yay, whether we do that um, live or, or however we film it, um, students would get to have an active hand in the design and creation of those puppets. Maybe you would be filming them at home or if the scenes are being filmed in the theater, maybe uh, a few of you at a time would get a chance to grab a light and perform some of the puppets, which would be creating like, um, you know that feeling when shadows suddenly look like something real or ominous or scary, but you're not sure if it's just a shadow. So I did a little bit of visual research and um, I, I found these sort of images of some creepy mood evoking, scene evoking sort of shadowy figures. That, but we could go sort of the sky's the limit with what students might come up with for this. And I, want, I don't want you to, this was preliminary research, but I want you guys to get the chance to do the visual research. That's something you can do at home in your own time. And um, it would be uh, hopefully super exciting to be a part of that creative process for you. Um, so that's my whole spiel. Um, and again, uh, if anybody has any um, questions, let's see, I'm gonna, I am going to stop share. There we go. So far, there and, haven't, um, so far there haven't been any questions, but we can definitely open it up right now to questions. Moira, thank you so much because I came with the information and the facts and you came with the <laughs> glitter and I, I appreciate that because that was very, I was very excited. So thank you. Are there any questions? Love it. No questions. We are oh, not right. Mm -hmm. not right now. Yeah, cool. I get it. We are still I, going to have more of these meetings, especially after July 27th, when we know for sure what's going to be happening. But I know our president of our college, President Sokinu, he's been having meetings with faculty and staff every Monday, and they've been so beneficial for us. And it's been nice to be in the know, and I thought that we should share that same sort of situation and information uh, with our students, because I can only imagine it's probably a little nerve wracking not knowing what's going on. But I want to encourage everybody to sign up for classes because, right, I hope there is a vaccine coming at the end of this year. I don't know, I'm not, in there in the labs figuring it out but if this is our near future I don't know how long it's going to be our future so learning these this way of creating theater 
I think it will be beneficial for the near future. And when there is a vaccine, I think we can take a lot of what we've learned and easily apply it to uh, when we are all able to be in person with each other. Uh, well, great. Does anybody else, any faculty want to say anything? I would, like to, I would like to jump in. Oh, uh, he's here, I, you I guys. Came in, I came in. Um, so, uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Suzanne, for pulling this together. Uh, it's great to see everybody, first of all. Um, it's nice to be looking at people uh, I, I enjoy looking at. Uh, not that I don't enjoy the other meetings I've been at, uh, but uh, you guys are, are, are the home team. So uh, it's, it's very great to see everybody, and I'm glad everybody's here. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's going to be a, a bumpy ride. Uh, next semester, but uh, you know, if there's any group, and, and I say this to anybody I'm meeting with on campus, if there's any group that's ready for uh, a bumpy ride and for making it up uh, as we go uh, over here, so we, as she's teaching improv, uh, you know, we're we're improving all the time now, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see what we come up with. And um, you know, uh, I was so thrilled when I saw the one act last semester. Um, I will say that I was slightly intimidated thinking that I'm going to be doing them this semester. Uh, I've looked at 1X and, and I've picked a few that I think uh, are going to be good uh, in any form that we, we do it. Uh, and I will uh, be contacting the people that, um, the scripts that I, I'd like to do uh, this week. And uh, one of the things I'm going to be telling everybody, whether they're writing or directing, is that um, the same thing we've been told. Uh, have multiple options ready uh, because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if uh, we're going to be fully on the ground. We don't know if we're going to be fully online. We don't know if we're going to have to wear masks while we perform or if we'll have plastic shields between us, between every actor as we're performing uh, or, or we'll be in plastic boxes. I don't know. Uh, so uh, we will figure it out. We'll be inside. We'll be outside. Um, we'll do things that we've never done before. We'll have to invent things that we've never used before um, and, and um, we'll, we'll all learn video editing uh, and uh, camera uh, operation which is not necessarily a bad thing I think in this environment uh, and um, we will do what we do we will create and we'll um, uh, boldly go where we've never gone before and, and, and we will make theater uh, and it's interesting to see that uh, I was just at a, a presentation with Dr. Sokino, our, our president, and education is changing. What we do and how we do it is changing. And, and even if COVID were to go away tomorrow, uh, the, the way we look at our campus, the way we look at delivery of classes, it's going to change. And, and it's going to be forever changed after this. Uh, and I, don't, I, I think that's going to translate to theater as well. Um, just even the, the business models, uh, you see the success of um, Hamilton. Uh, that's what I, when I first came in, I was going to say, what did I miss? You know, the dance hall, but I, I didn't. Uh, but, uh, you know, we see the success of Hamilton, and, and it's, it, it's going to change how we do theater and how theater is presented to a mass audience. Uh, and uh, ultimately, the camera and editing and... Um, you know, it was fascinating to see the way that was shot uh, from from backstage, from uh, above. Uh, I love the uh, over the over the cast shot. Um, so whether we incorporate that kind of video and interactivity with uh, what's happening on stage and projecting it or whatever, um, it, it's all going to be used at some time. So um, I'm just uh, it's it's actually a pretty exciting time to be doing this. So uh, you know. Who needs the black box? Who needs the main stage? We, we, we can do this. Uh, and, and I can't think of a better group to, to do it with. So uh, that's all I really wanted to say. And, and uh, again, thank you, Suzanne, for, for pulling this together. Yay, thank you, John. Cheerleader, as always. Spirit fingers. So if nobody else has any questions, I'm going to end this meeting so that it's a short file when I save it so that I can then easily put it up on the websites and what have you. Thank you so very much.
this was wonderful. And I hope you guys stay safe. I hope your family stays safe. And if you have any questions, email any of us. Thank you again. Yes. Thank you. I see, I see all our faculty here, too. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you, everybody.